Yeah, you gotta nail that category. <laughs> you gotta get in there. Uh, should we open up the, yeah. the uh, to some audience questions real quick before we start the movie? Uh, Mr. Man. Uh, what got you in touch with uh, Brian Lee O'Malley for uh, for starting Scott Pilgrim? Like, did you know him before he wrote the book, so was it just kind of a thing that like, you really got together after the book? Uh, the first book, I, I was given the first book, um, Precious Little Life, I think uh, like a month after it came out. And uh, so one of the producers, Jared LaBeouf, came to a Sean the Death screening and gave me the copy of the first book. And then I said to Brian, like, I called him on the phone after I'd read it, and so that was the first time I actually was in contact with him. That was in 2004, so we've sort of been working on it in 2005, you know, like five years ago. That's six years ago, it's 2011. <laughs> <laughs> did any of the uh, actors ever ad-lib anything that got in the movie, or is it all, did they all stick to the script? Um, oh, yes, yeah, I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> you did direct it, right? No, no, there are and you co-wrote it? No, there was a few ones, like, um, uh, no, there's, there is a good outlook. I'll come back to you on that one. All right, think about it. Next question. <coughs> Questions. Um, is, is Don't Ever Gonna Be Made? <laughs> and are you going to do something dramatic? Like, we know you do comedy and action and horror, but are you going to be dramatic? I, I like to do something that's, um, you know, uh, straighter. Like, um, I mean, I, I guess I... Most of the stuff I do has some kind of element of humor in it, but I'd like to do something that's a little different, you know. I don't know whether Don't will ever be a feature film. I have a funny... But think about it. Be honest. It will never be as good as the trailer. <laughs> that's true of too many films. <laughs> so I think I should be the smart one and quit while I'm ahead and not, and not make a film with Like, I don't know. I just think there's, all, there's something about, like, doing 90 seconds of something that's completely plotless. So that's almost the joy of it, is I didn't have to think about what the fuck it all meant. <laughs> it's just like money shot after money shot. I mean, it'd be fun. That said, I'd like to do a, a, a horror film that was in that vein, because I really like um, I really like all the Italian horror films that are more like mood pieces and sort of stylized, um, you know. And I, I, like, I like horror films that are more, you know, silent and kind of concentrate on... It's probably, you know, like, that's why there's a Hitchcock and De Palma Devil Brothers. I like... Some of those movies where they, they just concentrate on the suspense and, you know, exposition goes out the window. So, I, I like to do something like that. Was there anything you wanted to show in this series that you couldn't get for some reason? Or, um, like a print wasn't available or something? These guys are great here, so it's probably not Not really, not this time, like, um... It, well, the, the Super Cops is, is coming from London. There is, doesn't seem to be a print of it in the whole of the, of the States. So there are some prints that are... Uh, Delicatessen came from France, because there's no decent print of it in the US, and which is crazy, since it only came out like, um, you know, 18 years ago. Or maybe 20, 20 years ago, 1990. Supercops came from London. I think Thunderbolt and Lightfoot is Quentin's own copy. Um, <laughs> so, well, yeah, all the ones this time. But they're not easy to get hold of. And I think that's the, you know, especially with some of the lesser-known films, you know, that maybe, if you haven't seen them on the big screen, you should check them out while you still can, because these things, uh, they're not in very, people, you know, unless they're like major in the AFI top 100 list, these things don't get restored, and so the chance to actually watch them on the film will like disappear. Yeah, yeah, they, I was psyched when they put Empire Strikes Back in the uh, National Registry this year, so it, 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 will, that will always exist. <laughs> which version? Which version? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's the original version. Wouldn't it be great if Return of the Jedi got into the registry and it had Return of the Jedi and it had Ewok dancer? <laughs> <laughs> it, had to be, it had to be the original. I already wants to put Jabba the Hood and Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get somebody in the back. Oh, there, right over there. How about you? Me? Yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say, I mean, Michael Sarah was fantastic as, as Scott Pilgrim, but you mentioned that you had been working on this project for since 2005. Who else were you considering uh, for that role, or did you never even get that far until basically Sarah came up and said, "This is this is the guy I want to use." No. Yeah, there wasn't really anybody else because we, we worked on the script and then I went off to do Hot Fuzz. Like Hot Fuzz um, came after like the first draft of doing Scott Pilgrim. So that's kind of then, Hot, Hot Fuzz was like two and a half years of work. And then I came back to it. But I do remember that like when we had been writing the first draft, Michael was on Arrested Development. Yeah. And 
I said that, like, I said, oh, it's a shame that um, George Michael Kidd isn't older. By the time I got to make the film, it's like three years later. So there wasn't really anybody else, and, um, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's funny because, like, sometimes when people kind of, like, sort of uh, uh, have issues with his casting, which I always think is ridiculous, because I think it's fantastic, man. But I never, and I know I can never say it in an interview because, like, I actually like these people. But there were some suggestions made to me by, like, sort of higher up, which I just thought, oh my god, if the fanboys knew this one, their heads would explode. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, yeah, give us an example. Like, yes. no, I can't because I, I, I know some of the people, and actually I like them in a different role. I'll so say it, like, Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> No, that's not true. He was available, no strings attached. <laughs> we were walking down the, the street trying to remember which film was which, no strings attached, and friends with benefits. Yeah. Which had identical trailers. And we had an argument about which Yeah, they should just release them as a double bill and call it Fuck Buddies. <laughs> the new grindhouse. You can make a fun trailer to go in that. <laughs> That'll be a fun thing for you to do, a romantic comedy trailer. Just the trailer. Because we don't want you to make a whole one. <laughs> the glass is right there. Um, are you ever, I know you seem to be influenced by a lot of things, but any specific type of animation you've ever been influenced by? Because there's a lot of like kind of cartoony feel and then watching Hot Fuzz, for some reason I felt a lot of Wallace and Gromit. In there. <laughs> I do like I do like the Armin films. I mean, with um, with Scott Pilgrim, it was an amalgam of things that Brian had been influenced by, and uh, you know, me and my brother, who like um, was a graphic designer on it. Like, um, probably the first Japanese animation that I ever saw was Battle of the Planets, aka G4 Sketcher Man, and I used to love that when I was a kid. And so, um, and that was probably the first like um, anime that I ever saw. Um, and you know, and later things like Akira, and um, uh, but a lot, a lot of the influences are things that me and Brian sort of both liked. And there's some things that he put me onto. Like I, I, I liked Samurai Jack. <laughs> I, had, I wasn't aware of Thuli Cooley until Brian told me. About it. So that was something that, like, we would we would watch a lot of that, and that was something that we tried to we tried to do that thing in Scott Pilgrim of. of um, because what Japanese animation, what anime means is like sort of animating still kind of frames. So you're making kind of like still drawings move. And that's what we try to do in the movie, to have things kind of actually flat and the sort of, they move within the background, but the things aren't moving themselves. So yeah, I definitely like, um, you know, influenced by animation. Uh, Batman. Uh, so how did that um, casting for Thomas Jane and Clifton Collins <laughs> um, the vegan police. The vegan police. <laughs> spoiler alert. Oh, spoiler it for like some people. Oh, it's all right. Uh, it's yeah, still it's, it's still it's hilarious, it's even if you know it. Um, I just tried to think of two people that had been in other like sort of genre films that you know that you would believe that there was another film like with them in it that they would race off. <laughs> That's a great idea. A whole vegan I, police movie. <laughs> The trailer that I would do for a second grindhouse, not that there ever will be one, was I would do a trailer with the Andes from Hot Fuzz. <laughs> 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 there's, there's two in there and spin off, and the vegan police in there and spin off would be amazing. So maybe like a tra that, those would be two like great trailers to do as a vegan police kind of trailer. But yeah, Thomas Jane and Clifton Collins Jr. just, <coughs> it just I wanted it to seem like they could have walked off a different film, and then they seemed like they, you know. It seemed like a perfectly reasonable other genre film with them in it. <laughs> Probably. The title, the title for the, the, the film with the Andes was called, was called Maximum Tash. <laughs> <laughs> and it was going to open, and I remember Simon Pegg didn't really like this idea, the first shot of the trailer was going to be Nicholas Angel getting into his car, turning on the car keys and it exploding. And <laughs> 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 he had to cut a car bomb in like a... And all, the, all of the Andes like uh, meetings are all take place in lap dancing bars. Investigations. Love it. I want, I want to see it right here. Now that you've become a big superstar Hollywood director, <laughs> <laughs> is there any actors that or actresses you really want to work with, or are you talking to you about? Oh yeah, who do you want to work with? Oh, I know that's such a. Uh, I know 
no, no, there's so many people. Is someone you're really hot on right now? Um, I don't know, like any, like, right, I mean, that's, that's too, too many. There's so many, you've worked with so many amazing people already, like you could just work with all of them again, right? <laughs> like the cast of Scott Pilgrim is so great. Yeah, I mean, I just like to work with great people. I mean, that's what was really great about the cast of Scott Pilgrim is that every single one of them was like, you know, pretty much my first choice and they were all just amazing. And people that I either wanted already or people who were completely new and revelations to me, so that was great. Yeah, and every every character in the movie, I, I could see more of some, some some other way. You know, even if they're acting in something else, that'd be good. But I I would love to see like a bunch of Scott Pilgrim movies personally. Uh, right back there, <laughs> supporting vaguely. <laughs> Somebody just started yelling. Yeah, that, that hand. I like that hand. I like what you're doing with it. More backstory. Did you know anybody? Oh. 